Johnny Mac declared it. It's not just hearsay and Twitter. Johnny Mac is telling you right here he is Johnny Mac's OTA MVP. Now, that might not be worth much, but it's what worth a lot. That's it, the greatest award. I said, no, I'm joking. No, I, yeah. It's the greatest award you can get on May 31st of the offseason. That's right. So. That's right. Welcome in, everybody, a Friday edition, football Friday edition of Birds 365 OTAs yesterday. Johnny Mack was down at practice. Good morning to everybody in the chat. Good morning to you, John McMullen. How you doing, Johnny Mack? Uh, doing well, yeah. Isaiah Rogers season. Yeah, man. A lot of people talking about Isaiah Rogers. John, let's get right into it. What's your first uh, first takeaways from Isaiah and from the rest of the OTA? You were MVP of the OTAs, which are officially over. Uh, at least from a public perspective, they're going to have a, another OTA. Uh, but for the ones we saw, and that's only two, and it's only the spring, and it's May, and all those contextual things, and there's no pads, and there's no press coverage, and there's no Demonte Smith, but he has been spectacular living up to the hype of people who never saw him play before. He's been... Uh, there's nothing bad you can say about Isaiah Rogers. That's great, though. I mean, he looks like, and, and I and I know you guys talked to him afterward too. Did he have some good things to say in the press conference? I didn't get a chance to catch him. I did. I did hear some of the other guys who spoke, Jordan and Nolan Smith and stuff. But it sounded like Isaiah Rogers was energetic, and he had some good things to say. Yeah, I was most impressed by uh, the fact that he, you know, he completely takes um, uh, accountability for what happened with his suspension. And he's not one of those guys who complains about, oh, the rules and this and it's too harsh and, and that. He just uh, put his head down, kept working, uh, obviously kind of explained. You know, one of the things that's so impressive is he hasn't been on a field football field in over 500 days and he looks like the best guy out there and you know you would think the rust you saw it with Deshaun Watson when he had his issues and yep. came back hasn't been the same player um and it's very early as I said in the pro uh, uh process I gave you all those contextual things I hope you pay attention to that you know when he gets the pads on is he going to be physical um really you know he's dealing with Paris Campbell and um, um, Joseph Nada right now, you know, when it becomes more AJ, more Devante, obviously it's going to get a little bit more difficult to say the least. Um, but I, I most impressive is he kept himself ready and he tried to mimic a, a normal game week, uh, throughout the off season, what he would do to prepare, keep his body ready. So, um, all good. Can't say anything bad about Isaiah Rogers. All you can judge is what's out there. Um, and he, you know, had a pick six, uh, baited Jalen Hurts in a backed up period. And it was a throw to A.J. Brown, slant to A.J. Brown, just picked it off and took it for a pick six. So uh, to see that kind of savviness and, and, and you know, that slay level stuff, you know, baiting quarterbacks to right. throw something and, and jump in the route. So uh, pretty impressive. How good, John? Like, are we talking like a guy that could potentially be a starting outside corner on this team? I know we talked about it maybe at slot, but if if he's looking that good, it, is Slay almost, I don't want to say in the way because Slay is a, is a fantastic player, but what are they going to do? Are they going to keep Quinion on the bench if, if Isaiah Rogers is playing that well? Um. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to go that far yet. No, I, yeah, okay. I, I always tell the story. I don't know if you heard it when you were the producer, but I always tell the story of Kyrie's A-Bear. Nobody remembers uh, for good reason uh, because he never turned in anything. But right. early in my career, he is the best spring player I've ever seen. I mean, he made a play at practice every day. And I'm talking splash play. And he was just, he looked like Ronnie Lott. Um, and, you know, as training camp got there and the pads came on and they had uh, training camp was longer in those days and much more time to get exposed. Um, all of a sudden, 
You know, he was running with the first. He was so good in the spring. He was an undrafted free agent. He was so good in the spring. He started training camp as on, on the first team. And it slowly, slowly started falling apart. Um, second team, third team. He didn't even make the team. Uh, eventually went to the CFL. Um, and I'm not saying that's Isaiah because he's already yeah, been he's in the NFL. The context of it is yeah. Spring football, yeah. Yeah, it, it, he's already been in the NFL. He's clearly an NFL player. Uh, but, you know, you drafted Quinion Mitchell, number 22 overall, for a reason. Um, you know, he was drafted. He was the first cornerback drafted in this draft for a reason. Um, he's got tremendous talent, um, tremendous upside. Now, where I think Isaiah Rogers has kind of positioned himself, um, and we'll see many camp next week that we'll get to see each practice. Um, I, I think, you know, something's going to happen with James Bradbury, whether it's sooner or later. And, and I don't think James is going to be here. I've been pretty above board on that. And uh, I, I think he's the guy that if now that Quinion Mitchell and, and Cooper Dejean add Cooper in there as well. If they're not ready to play right away, which, you know, if you listen to Nolan Smith's press conference yesterday, you know, there's a learning curve to the NFL. Bottom line, no matter who how good you are, there's a learning curve to the NFL. Um, and if they're not ready to play right away, I say Rogers is probably the guy now that would start opposite Darius Slay. I would say that. Um, but does that mean Quinion Mitchell won't be out there? By no means does it mean that. Yeah, but I tell you what, all of a sudden the cornerback room, and and I know it is spring football. I don't want to overreact to Isaiah Rogers, but it's not just you saying it. It's any reporter that was down there is calling out how good he looked. All of a sudden, Slay, Rogers, Ringo, Mitchell, DeGene, Ricks, Maddox. All of a sudden, I mean, that's a that's a pretty good cornerback room. And and, and if if Slay can play competent, Rogers steps up, and Mitchell is what we think he could be. I mean, that could be that could turn to a strength quickly. We we had them as a weakness yesterday. I don't I don't know if that's going to pan out. Well, that was my I kind of that like the it beginning might be, of the year, it, right? We it might be weakness strength, early yeah. strength because like, you have Quinion and Cooper, and they're both right. going to be good players. It's just a matter of of uh, of that ramp up period of that learning curve, how how quick or how long, and everybody's a little bit different. Um, and this is a very difficult defense to learn, as I mentioned, so that factors into it as well. Um, but yeah, they look, they have potential. They have the potential to be very deep at corner. They have a bunch of guys who have what Howie would call the traits in their bodies to be good corners. You're right. Does that mean they're all going to hit? I said yesterday. No, doesn't mean they're all going to hit. But there's a pretty good chance they have so many that one or two are going to hit. And that's sort of the goal. And you mentioned Ringo. Ringo was back. Uh, Slay was not there. CJ was not there. So you had Slay, CJ, and Bradbury were not there. Obviously, James was not there. Um, so it was Isaiah Rogers and, and Kaylee Ringo as the starters on the outside. Tyler Hall was a starter in the slot, and that's because Avante Maddox moved back to play safety, safety. next to Reed Blankenship. So um, it's another sort of indication. They're going to make Cooper DeGene earn it, I guess. Yeah, spot. well, yeah, same with Quinion. Quinion's on the second team because they're going to make him earn it. But it is an indication that Avante's going to be here and they value that versatility. And he's going to, his ability to be backup safety, um, if healthy, uh, gives them the opportunity to probably keep one more of those young corners that they may have had to cut. Right. Um, if they If they needed... Uh, to get a, a for safety. Yeah, and the more I hear about the cornerback room and the more it seems like they're going to go that route. Let's just stay on cornerback real quick. Corey in the chat's asking about Ringo, and I wanted to ask you about him, so I'll go right there. He was not present at the first OTA that was open to the media. He was present yesterday. As you mentioned, he was playing in Slay's position because Slay was not out there. How did Keely Ringo look? Uh, does he look like a guy that's going to take another step forward this year, and, and what did you see from him out there? 
Yeah, he looked good as well. He had a chance. He should have. They they had four yeah. interceptions, and they should have yeah, had good, five. Good day for the defense, huh? Yeah, the defense is uh, – well, we'll talk about the offense because they are struggling. But uh, they had four interceptions, um, should have had five, and, and Kaylee dropped one. Um, Jalen threw a, a deep ball. I think it was to Paris Campbell. I'd have to check my notes. But um, – and he was all over it, and, and he should have picked it off, but he dropped it. So it should have been five, uh, and he's playing well. Uh, yeah, I mean, four interceptions, and all three quarterbacks got picked. All three of them. Yeah. Um, so the defense is playing very well early. Now, you, you hear it all the time, and it's true. Defense is always ahead of offense early in the NFL because the offense – needs a little bit more chemistry, needs a little bit more time. I wouldn't exactly panic, but uh, it's been a struggle uh, for this group, to, which is learning a new offense and trying to install a new offense with Kellen Moore. They have not looked good, to be fair. Um, but it's spring. It's May, May 30th. So I wouldn't – it's May 31st. But um, I wouldn't – I wouldn't get too – overwork because they have so much talent and again Devontae wasn't out there again lane hasn't been out there um and they did one team they actually did one 11 they rarely do 11 on 11 so they did an 11 on 11 um red zone period jalen hurts had an opportunity to throw a touchdown pass to dallas got it was a little bit outside a little bit high uh, dallas couldn't get it in so Jalen hasn't looked good, to be honest. Uh, Kenny Kenny took a big step back uh, from – he had a good first practice. He badly underthrew John Ross. They tried a deep shot to John Ross. And yeah, I saw was, a couple underthrows to John. Is that because he's so dang fast? Or yeah, trying? well, he is. Yeah. But, 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 but that's not why the – that was a Makai Gardner interception that was underthrown because it was so badly underthrown. I mean, it wasn't about John's speed. John's very fast, obviously, but it wasn't like he couldn't. It was just a bad throw. Um, and then Tanner McKee was, uh, I don't know if Doug Nuss Nussmeyer is trying to break down his mechanics, but he looked like a different guy. He looked like a mechanical mess. So um, he got picked uh, by Sean Stevens uh, to end the practice. Not a good day for the offense. Uh, I will say that. Yeah, I did see the video you posted out, too, of Jalen Hurts with Doug Nussmeyer. So uh, we'll get into that. We're going to start the show today. I want to welcome everybody in. Thank you all for being here, Twiz and Prince, uh, Corey, Ricky, Dank. We appreciate Dill Lock. We appreciate all you guys. Make sure you drop a like on Bird365 as it's the best thing you can do to help us grow. So we appreciate you all being here this morning. Johnny Mac and I are going to do a little uh, open recap, what stood out to John that we're doing right now, and then – a little bit later on in hour number one, we're going to do kind of a deep dive into and anybody that stood out, the position groups, Zach Bond. A lot of people are talking about Zach Bond. So even the Devin White, Devin White, by the way, Nicobe Dean surprised to me was back. Uh, so that's that might calm people, the injury people down. Um, but he was back on the second team and it was rotating. Uh, so he's clearly, you know, they're dipping the toes in the pool. But you know, I'm starting to think Devin White's going to be the middle linebacker, uh, and Nicobe Dean's going to be a backup. Yeah, I mean, um, especially if Zach Vaughn is playing as well as it sounds like he's playing. Yeah, um, Bick has, you know, in the limited opportunities we've had to talk to him, he has spoken very highly of both Devin White and Zach Vaughn, um, and kind of put. Nicobe off to the side mentioning he's just getting back and you know maybe it's just that maybe they're yeah. taking right. him slowly right but you know Devin White's just bigger um and you know he's more equipped physically to handle middle linebacker in the NFL um we know some of the issues he had in Tampa we've talked about them a lot um but Doug uh the Vic excuse me seems to um, think he's a good player. 
um, and he had a bad year, uh, and he thinks he'll bounce back. And, he, and, you know, it was notable with Zach Bond. When he started talking about linebackers, <clears throat> first name out of his mouth was Zach Bond, so that was notable too. Um, may have been How's Zach Bond look to you? Good, right? Well, he had an interception, but that was more, and that's what I was. That's why I brought up Devin White. That was more Devin White and Isaiah Rogers. That 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 was a throw over the middle, and those guys just had uh, it locked down um, inside throw over the middle, and it was tipped, and Zach corralled it for an interception. So it's one of those things where. People were going to notice the interception, but it was really about Devin White and Isaiah Rogers. And um, Zach did a nice job hauling it in. He kind of bobbled it and then corralled it. Um, but I was more impressed with Devin and Isaiah on that particular play. Yeah, because they created the the uh, deflection. So good stuff yeah. from them. Good stuff from Zach Bond. Thanks, James Carver, <clears throat> for being here this morning. For the Super Chat, we appreciate it. Thank you, Johnny Mack and Xander, for the second OTA press-wise wrap-up and videos. It was the first thing I watched last night after my power came back on. Love Birds 365 since the draft. James, thank you, man. We appreciate you being here. As always, you are a great contributor to the show. Um, all your great comments, all your great contributions. So we appreciate you and everybody else in the chat. As always, Johnny Mack, what else stood out to you yesterday? I know the defense is well ahead. Sounds like Jalen Hurts is uh, still finding his rhythm this offseason, but anything else that stuck out to you? Well, that's one of them, you know, how how they are struggling offensively trying to get yeah. the system down. And it, it, maybe it shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, it probably shouldn't be a surprise, uh, but it hasn't looked uh, good at all from, from that standpoint. And I, I, I'm not going to sound the alarm bells from the perspective of, this team has too much talent to not be successful when everybody is there. Um, but I, I, you know, we can only talk about what we saw and I'm right. not going to sugarcoat it. It was bad from an offensive perspective uh, yesterday. And, you know, some of the same things, a little bit forcing the ball to AJ. Um yeah, I read that somewhere else too. Shoot, I wish I could give him credit where I read that. But I did read a – I mean, now, granted, Devontae Smith's not out there, but I did read that that could partly be that interception that Isaiah Rogers turned back, you know. He telegraphed Well, yeah, it, I man. mean, yeah, it was. And, um, you know, whether you want to say telegraphed or Isaiah baited him, but, yeah. uh, you know. And, look, it's natural when you have a player like A.J. Brown to sort of default to him, but – you know, when it's not there, that's when we talk about, and that's a fine line, you know, if, if, if AJ's cooking, but if they're trying to take him away and it's not there, you have to, that's where the other people have to step up and you have to get the other people involved, not necessarily game planning to get him the football, but through right. the natural progression of the routes. Um, yeah. And that's where I think the there. predictability thing can come into play. Like if they're taking away AJ and you're forcing the ball to him over and over again, that's where I think there there is merit to that. But overall, I do agree with you. Yeah. Um, and again, it's May. I hope everybody understands that. In the yeah, context it's May. we have it, to do but, a show today, guys. We're going to talk about it. You know. So. Yeah, and 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 you know, once once this offensive line gets on the field again, there was one eleven on eleven session, brief session in the red zone, but there's no pads. There's no physicality from Lane Johnson. There's no land landed Dickerson pushing people around. There's no Jordan Milata dominating, uh, uh, pass rushers. Um, you know, then it becomes a, a different game when, when that offensive line is out there. So, um, this is just essentially a passing camp, as I mentioned. Um, and the passing game hasn't looked good. Um, it just hasn't. John, I want to ask you about tight end. Albert O making some plays. EJ Jenkins making some plays. I mean, Dallas Goddard, I think, and CJ Uzama are your locks at one and two, but is Grant Calcaterra going to be showing the door? Yeah, I, I think he's 
on the bubble, no question. I think they're all on the bubble. I think Albert Albert O's on the bubble. I think Grant's on the bubble, and EJ Jenkins is playing himself into at least getting uh, some looks to be a potential tight end three. I think he's been the best in the passing camp. But again, the pads aren't on. Blocking's a big part of playing yeah. tight end. Yeah. I don't know if EJ block and EJ Jenkins can block us. So I haven't seen him. Yeah. with pads on so that factors into it um well yeah those three guys uh, are probably going to be pushing to be the the third tight end behind dallas goddard and cj uzama um and cj was back and it was good to see him he's he's a big dude and he knows how to play i don't know how much is left in the tank but he knows how to play NFL football, and that's a big deal, sort of what Nolan Smith talked about a little bit as well. Um, and I think, you know, the top two will be an upgrade because I think CJ still got enough where he's going to be better than Jack Stoll in that type of, of, of role. Um, but Jenkins has been impre impressive. He, he had a back shoulder from Kenny Pickett, uh, very natural receiver. Um, He's having a very good spring. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure he's opened some eyes. Uh, Albert was a little bit better. Uh, he had a nice catch as well. Um, and and Oren Burks, I, I believe, was in coverage. Um, it's clear that the Howie Roseman likes Albert O. He traded for him. We all thought he wouldn't be re-signed because he didn't contribute last year. And the Eagles signed him early in the process. Um, so how he sort of wants it to succeed, I, I would think Albert has the default sort of, it's his job to lose, but we'll see how it shakes out. I think it'll be a, a legitimate competition. Yeah. So some pretty good takeaways from Johnny Mac D it's, I think it's a good thing to hear that the defense is playing as well as they are, because I think they're the bigger question going into the, into the season, and everybody needs them to take a step forward. Uh, the Eagles need them certainly to take a step forward uh, if they want a chance to compete for a Super Bowl. Uh, anything you learned yesterday from we will, and we'll talk about this in our extended breakdown and our deep dive into each thing. But any just quick takeaways from the press conferences yesterday uh, sounded like Jordan Davis sounded pretty good. Nolan Smith was all fired up a little bit. Brandon Graham esque. Uh, any takeaways from the press conferences yesterday? Yeah, Nolan is, uh, you know, he he's the heir apparent to be the energy yeah. guy. But, you, you know, you got to perform. You can't be Brandon Graham without the performance to back it up. Um, and that's, you know, he's got the rest of it. The energy guy, as you mentioned. Right. Um, but you got to perform. And, and this is a big season. And everybody who saw Nolan, you know, he's gotten bigger. He's 245, he said. Um, so that's part of it, you know, getting a little bit talked about that basically all last season, it's got to get bigger and stronger. And that's what happened. That generally is what happens when, you know, people joke about major college football and, you know, they're essentially majoring in football in college, which is true, but you do, there is some, you know, other responsibilities, um, and you know, when you get to the NFL, it's your job. Uh, and the same thing with Jordan Davis, Jordan Davis, a uh, lot of talk about conditioning and things of that nature. He's 350, hasn't lost much weight, but he looks as everyone saw at the autism, uh, bike ride. Um, he looks leaner, he looks slimmer, um, and it's, it's better weight. Um, so he's been doing his job, and he kind of confirmed that <laughs> Vic, is, Vic is counting on Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis, which I mentioned. Um, that's the foundation of this defense. That's what this defense is going to be built on, those two players um, in the middle of this defense. So they got to perform. And Jordan said he wants us to play a lot, essentially. and. You know, Vic wants them to be the dudes, as as he kind of mentioned, and um, we'll see. Um, a lot of it has to do with the conditioning aspect. Can they play a Fletcher Cox level of snaps 
Uh, I would say that would be more Jalen because he's the pass rusher, but Jordan as well is going to be, you know, he's the guy in those five man fronts, but he's going to play a lot in four man fronts. So that means he's got to uh, do a little bit better on the pass rush as well and be a little bit more consistent from that standpoint. I know you, you're not seeing much from the defensive line because it is a passing camp mostly right now in, in helmets and shorts, but how did, how does Jordan Davis look out there? I saw the video of him jogging around yesterday. Anything you can see from him or not much? No, I mean, this is not the time to yeah, it's uh, not the time to ingest see offensive and defensive linemen, to be honest. I, I just know that they have – they're extremely gifted. And – um and I put them together, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, college teammates, pro teammates. Um, and and Vic said it about Jalen specifically. Look, doesn't matter how we use him, he's gonna be good. He's right. just he's just good. And the same with Jordan. He's just good. Um, it's a matter of how good is he gonna be. Um but they clearly are building this defense on the foundation of those two particular players. We're going to get to our first commercial break. We'll come back and into our deeper dive into the OTA and talk about some specific players. It's the Isaiah Rogers show right now at OTAs for Eagles camp. Only two MVP OTAs. of OTAs. Johnny Mack declared it. It's not just hearsay and Twitter. Johnny Mack is telling you right here. He is Johnny Mack's OTA MVP. Now that might not be worth much, but it's what worth do you a mean? lot. That's the it, greatest award, I said. No, I'm joking. You know, I, yeah. it's the greatest award you can get on May 31st of the offseason. That's right. So, That's right. Oh, uh, uh, Isaiah Rogers looks like he could be a player for the Eagles, which is good stuff. So we'll get to our first commercial break. I want to thank everybody for being in here this morning. Uh, anybody that didn't join in at the top of the show, we'll recap a little bit what we hit on. Uh, mostly Isaiah Rogers talking about him and how good he's looked and and the crowded cornerback room. So we'll get to that. We'll talk press conferences. We'll talk Zach Bond. We'll talk defense, Vic Fangio, all that and more coming up next on Birds 365. Stay tuned, everybody. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.